finally here, guys. I've held off on it, and I finally invested out of morbid curiosity. But man, do we have a lot to go over in this. Today, we are gonna launch, if it isn't obvious, into Unreal Card Magic by Benjamin Earl with Club 52 and Illusionist Collaboration. Let's go ahead and start to launch in here. First things first, you can see first the packaging here is absolutely beautiful. Um, and you might be wondering, well, it's still in the box. Well, I put it back in the box. I've had the nice little art display out for days in the background here. Maybe some of you that are eagle-eyed and watch some other videos have seen it. I just reboxed it up so I can give you the same experience that I had when I first opened it. Really cool stuff in here. The download itself is top, tip, 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 top quality. Honestly, probably one of the most beautiful, best things Illusionist ever released. That includes my material I've worked with them on as well. Um, that being said, I think the smart thing to do here is just launch right in and take a look here at what's inside the box, what's included, break it down, have a look at this art piece, all that fun stuff. So, what are you getting for your uh, $150 now? for the Unreal Card Magic. I mean, see the box is massive. It takes up most of my desk. It's huge, it's big, it's beautiful. Um, collaboration between Illusionist and Studio 52. I think I said Club 52. Um, you can see here on the back, you know, right here, I think that's, that's a very uh, true statement. It's fucking game on. And, uh, you know, the ultimate God Power Card Magic. It's really not an overstatement there either. I wanna say that to preface this. When you open it up, you get hit with this big, beautiful wooden hand that is just, you know, so much you can, so much fun, so different. Like, who buys a magic kit and gets a big wooden hand, right? So that's part one. Then you lift up, you go a little bit deeper, and we have this big wooden base or box. And you can see there's all the beautiful packaging on the inside here, uh, you know, making it look really nice here, these side designs. I believe this is uh, Oban Jones over at Illusionist. As always, killer Illusionist, uh, you know, for the win on packaging. Close this guy up and get it out of the way. So we can have a look at what we've actually got inside of our base and box. So the base itself, you can see, has Unreal etched in it. It's got that uh, new wood smell to it, too, which is nice. And then when we put the, how this works, basically, is you put the hand on top. Boom, and there you go. And if you're like me, you put a deck of cards in here. Now, I have waited on something just for you guys. You're welcome. I've been waiting for this. I want to digest all the material, and, um, you know, before I really dug into the box. I've not read <clears throat> this little book yet, the WTF book. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, I've not read it yet. It's been, I've been crazy the past few weeks. Oh, I don't want to rip my book. So the only thing I don't like about this out the gate is removing this book is seriously, without damaging it, is seriously a challenge. I wish they, if I had one gripe, it'd be that. There we go. But inside, this is a really nicely produced book. So those of you that have the How to Read Minds kit and stuff in the past, you'll basically know that they do all out on this. So in here, there's some great psychology techniques. Um, I really need to sit down and read through this, but there's lots of photos in here too, which I think is really cool. It's beautifully designed, fits with the whole vibe of the whole project. Um, and I like the, the changing text fonts and stuff like that throughout it. And that's the WTF book that's in here. I'm sure it's amazing. Um, when you're in the box, you're greeted by, first off, your card. This is basically your tutorial code. So for those of you who haven't bought it or whatever, you click that, you, you enter this code in, and boom, there you go. I went ahead and contacted my friends at Illusions and said, hey, can I get the tutorials while I'm waiting on this? And they did. And you agree to it, two of the preferred decks by Ben. These are the professional tally hoes. And I have never, ever, ever, ever handled these decks before. I really like the insignia on there. That insignia on the... Um, you know, actual, get in there close, that insignia on there, and the actual uh, tuck case is really beautiful, so I'm going to very carefully 
do the little red tape. So, oh yeah, get rid of my trashy trash. And then my preferred way of doing the old tuck case open is to take your Yigel Masika ring flights that you've got that you need to make a review for and uh, crack that sucker open just like that. So boom, and I like to tuck those back. There we go. And we're in. So I'm excited to, uh, I'm really excited to honestly see these, handle these for the first time. This is gonna be really exciting. Cause, ooh, okay. So out the bat, the feel, really good feel out of, out of pack. So let me get rid of our, Oh, there's a double backer. Oh, that's really cool. There's a double backer included. This makes me so happy. I'll tell you why, because I have a... Um, I do a version of uh, any thought of card... Oh, these feel so nice. Wow. Okay, these might be my new favorites. Uh, these might be my new favorites. Like, I'm trying to get more inclined with, you know, having a uh, mark deck in hand all the time, but these might be my new favorites. Wow, these feel really, really good. Tally-ho, as you can see. I guess I don't need to, I'm not flipping the camera, so tally-ho. Wow, these feel really, really nice. Uh, obviously coming out in U.S. New Deck order. Uh, if I had one gripe about them right now, if I had to gripe about anything, if I had to really be that guy, I wish there was two Jokers instead of just one. Eh, but what can you do? So, that being said, looking at the deck, beautiful. The fact they include double backer. As to quote G, that is a slam banger thing. These feel really, really good though. I can't wait to really, you know, work these in. These, ooh, ooh, these feel nice. And you can see how tiny of hands I've got, which we'll uh, talk about later in the video because that is inhibiting on one particular thing in the whole set. So I'm having to do, uh, had to figure out an alternative to it, which I'm sure I'll figure out. But yeah, these feel really nice, guys. These are. Really nice, solid feeling cards. I like these. Uh, I like these quite, quite, quite a lot. These feel. These feel great. So definitely not open my other deck for a minute, and probably ordering a brick of these as soon as possible too. Because damn, do these feel nice. I think they're relatively expensive. I think like six, seven dollars a deck, but I can see why these are Ben's preferred. Uh, Deck. I know I, one of the things I love about these two, I haven't used Tally Hose in years since the Vipers days of Illusionist, but you know, if we. You got that nice. You got that nice uh, fan. You got that nice back there. Obviously, these look great with like a pirouette as well, which I can do no justice to the pirouette. But these feel. These feel really nice. These are good. This is a good thing to come with this come with this uh, box. There's really no excuse. You have the same tools that Ben's using in the actual download itself. So, you know, all that being said, let's move on here to what the actual contents of the uh, of the download itself is. And before we do that, I'll show you. Let me build it up here. Dum 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 da da dum. Massively prepared. There you go. And you can see the actual finished piece itself here that will be living on my uh, backdrop here. Uh, only thing is, because I want to use these cards, I might switch it out because I have one unopened deck of the Illusionist Street Magic cards. I love these. They're unopened. I'm never going to open these if I can help it. Um, get that focus in here. Come here, you. Come on, focus. But I don't, oops, I just dropped my hand. Uh, I don't ever want to open this particular deck of cards because I'm a massive, massive fan of um, these cards. They feel nice, they're great. I've got one open deck. I'm gonna order some more before they go out of production because I'm sure that they were, are actually limited. These are really, really nice. But before we dive into the contents and inside what's inside the actual download here, let me get a pause here and pull it up really fast. All right, guys. So I've just pulled up the table of contents here on the back end of Illusionist. I'm just going to run through bit by bit here. I'm going to try and keep this concise and simple. I will say out the gate, there are a few effects in here that straight up fooled me. Um, main one is Octopus. That one <laughs> got me good. 
So let's take a look into what we've really got here, right? So you can see here, we've got like our intro, basic handling techniques, uh, in your hand effect. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here, right? This is a big beefy project and Ben does not disappoint. Um, so in basic handling, for example, you can see, just look how beautifully shot this is. Like this is so beautifully shot. Like, wow. They did such a good job with this. And I believe primarily this was Miles. I don't want to take, take anything away from Dwayne when I say this, but man, some beautiful, beautiful stuff. So in basic handling, goes over like grips, spreads, riffles. They're all organized into chapters right here. And you might think you know your stuff already. I thought I knew my stuff, but I just emptied my cup like I like to do and decided to watch it anyway. So much subtle stuff in here by Ben. That's going to be the key word throughout this whole review. Subtlety. Less is more. Ben goes into so many different things in here that we wouldn't really think about because we think we know too much or we think we know it all. And there's a lot of really great stuff in here that's just mind-blowing. For example, like, you know, going over his cuts and things like that. You know, simple things like, for example, <laughs> sorry, wooden hand, I'm going to need this. I'm going to need this back. Like, I don't think it's going to give anything away or make anyone butt hurt me sharing this, but simple things like when you're doing a overhand shuffle, for example, normally it's like this, doing this, and it's real clunky, but he just suggests, well, you know, if you just do something like this, it makes it much more smooth. Oh, there's a face-up joker in there. Maybe there is another joker. Hello. Is there two jokers in here? Did I say something earlier that was dumb? I mean, that wouldn't surprise me. Yep, there's two jokers. Yep, so I missed it. There's two jokers in this deck. These are literally perfect. Okay. Add markings to them, and I'm completely sold, and we'll buy a brick of 120. Um, <laughs> but those subtle things like that, uh, or how to shuffle, how to spread, there's all kinds of crazy stuff in here, right? So we'll, we'll kind of cap it off on that and understand there's so many subtleties in this that even if you think or you know that you know your stuff, watch this anyway. So much in here. Techniques are where things really start getting interesting. Because a lot of the stuff in this project, guys, doesn't rely on any slights or anything that you don't know, you don't understand. There's nothing new under the sun here, per se, but what you're getting is the subtleties and techniques that elevate you from being just average to being next level. Like, imagine the first time that you saw Danny Dortiz. I know, I remember it because it was on video the first time. I didn't even know who he was. You know, for those that are interested, Chaos and Order uh, from Penguin Magic. Um, that was my first time experiencing Danny Dortiz in any way, shape, or form. I had no idea who he was or had seen a Spanish card magician before, aside from, um, I believe I saw Woody Aragon. And Woody is fantastic. He's another one of those super subtlety guys. But, again, like... There's so much in here in the technique side that's just crazy good. Like, you can see we go over things like you know, how to take your selection. He spends like eight minutes on that alone. How to manage breaks. Break management's huge. He's got some great tips here on break management. Like, uh, again, I don't think I'm giving anything away by, like, things that I... And I implement this from Ben because I've seen real ace cutting. I do real ace cutting because it's one of my favorite ah, routines. I think it's great. Um, but like simple things like, let's say you do your bit, you catch your you catch your break, and then just flexing the deck like that, and how you manage that break and how you transfer that break. It's really smart stuff in there, you know, like really smart stuff, like uh, things that you wouldn't just think about unless you've spent a noxious amount of time, like Ben has, really trying to figure this stuff out down to its purest form, you know. Uh, the fingertip peak. This is used heavily through this. Really, uh, and those of you that think like, oh, I know the fingertip peak. I know how to, I, I know that thing. And then you do that, and then, no. No. It's not. Not what it is. <laughs> it is, but it isn't. It's so much more than that in there. Uh, Mahatma Shuffle. This is what's used as, the, as your main control throughout the entire project. And holy crap, there's some great stuff. He goes in the classic pass. Talks quite a bit about it, but also covers basically my opinion on a classic pass, which my opinion on what's, what's the best classic pass, it's, here, you want to see my classic, do you want to see my classic pass? Yeah, oh, I just did it, you know, 
Or you want to see a cla my or this one? You want to see my classic pass? Oh yeah. Okay. How was it? You know, he kind of covers more than that, but he covers and dispels a lot of uh, bad thinking and bad opinions, in my opinion, on the classic pass. I'm not saying it's not usable, just I align with Ben on a lot of this stuff. You know, he covers culling, overhand stock controls, including a stock control I really love, in the hands false cuts, the double thunder cut. This thing is so simple, but so cool. It fixes the problem, like, let's be honest, guys. Can we just agree that the Dumble Undercut is like the most awkward thing on the planet and looks so exactly what it is? Boom. Fixed. The real optical shuffle. Like, if you saw the trailer for this where he's shuffling a deck of cards and he shows you that it's actually not shuffled, this is probably what got you more than anything. I know it got me. It looks... It's weird. It's, he describes it in here. It looks stupid while you're doing it, but it looks impossible to everyone else watching. It's crazy. Top palm, one hit a bottom palm, which is a super hard move that I wasn't even really that aware of, and I love the way he's taught it and done it. The palm switch, uh, the tip over switch, push off double lift, uh, top changes, and it's thinking on the top change is so next level, it's crazy. It's actually, and I have a really good top change. I have a top change that I've never been caught on. Well, not never, but I haven't been caught on it in over 20 years. And he added things to that that really killed it. The riffle force. Wow, how he fixes the riffle force, too. Cross-cut force. This is my favorite section in this whole thing is the cross-cut force. I'm so sad it's only really 10 minutes long. But there's so much good information on the cross. Like, Ben has used the cross-cut force so much. Oh, my God, it's so good. There's a few effects in here with it. So that leads down to, like, selected time travel. This is just a really simple effect, and some magicians might look at it and go, well, that's kind of basic, ain't it? It's so not. So I can tell you, I've done variations of this effect before, this selected time travel effect. What you're really going to get out of this, what you should really know more than anything else, is Ben thinks about card magic and magic in general the same way I think about making videos. There needs to be a hook, an interest peak, value delivery, and then a close or a call to action. What's next? And he does that and applies that to card magic, and it's brilliant. It's so brilliant. He has so many just... Things that just hook people in and draw them in, and then he does amazing card magic. And he's less is more mentality makes this ma card magic really unreal. And not just because of the fact that the effect is superb, but also because of the fact that it's so freaking simple. Unreal transposition, not your typical transposition effect. If you're thinking to switch a uh, you know selected card with an ace of spades, <laughs> completely different. The touch one. This one I have performed at least a half dozen times since I got this set last week. Ridiculously simple to execute, ridiculously great effect. It, it leaves people speechless. They go, ah, ha, ha, how? They lose their mind. The touch two, also a great effect. Not as good as the touch one, in my opinion, but a different, the same premise, different effect, different conclusion, which I think is still nice. Sleeve job, another one of those great transposition effects. Uh, really direct and simple here, guys. And I, it, 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 it kind of also addresses that, like, using your sleeves thing in a kind of cheeky, hooky kind of way that draws people in. Um, octopus. Oh, this is my favorite effect. Oh, I, I remember I was actually texting uh, G from Illusionist. I was saying, hey, I'm watching Unreal Card Magic finally now. He's like, oh, great, man. You know? What do you think of it? I'm like, oh, it's the most beautiful thing you guys have ever shot, which I think, <laughs> to an extent, might have got them because it wasn't entirely them. Um, but I was telling you, I sent, I remember I was watching Octopus about that time, and I sent him a text saying, bro, Octopus just fooled me. Octopus just fooled me. It's so, so good. And guys, I don't think that magician fooling magic is necessarily the best magic. I don't think it is. But Octopus is entertaining for a lay person and would destroy, like, your typical hyper-analytical, there-to-try-and-poke-holes-in-the-bag person super easily, but it'll also destroy magicians as well. It's you, another really great effect that is just mainly the premise is what you're paying for. The premise, the scripting, the lines, so good. I should say, a lot of these effects in this download are almost so perfectly stripped down and perfect, the least amount of words... The least amount of effect, effort and effect, effort to make the maximum effect. You really don't need to change any of it. 
Hoff shot. This is the thing. Oh, this one's so good, and it breaks my heart because I you need the ability to do one of those, you know, double Charlier style cuts. And I've just got too tiny of thumbs, guys. My thumbs are just I've got midget thumbs. They're so tiny. I can't reach across and do that stuff. It's the same that broke my heart when I was younger when I got Cobra Cut by DeVoe. I can never do that because my thumbs are just too small. They are way, 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 way too small to pull this off. So I'm trying to figure out another way to do this so I can do this effect because it's literally just that good. He's taken like a traditional effect that I've actually seen James Brown do quite a bit. He does it super well. I saw him do it at Blackpool live in person. I straight up told him like, James, I didn't fool me at all. But seeing you do that for a lay person and just experiencing it from being able to watch, whew, wow, amazing. But Ben has a different effect. It's not the same effect. It's different, but similar. Okay? In your hand. Brr. There's some thinking in here. And this applies some of his thinking on, like, the uh, top change and stuff in this. Oh, and it's so good. Because it's basically um, the Rossini surprise card stab, but done amazingly well. Done amazingly, amazingly well. Um, Unreal M ACR. That's Unreal Ambitious Card Routine, for those who are curious. And this, I'll tell you what, I haven't done Ambitious Card in a lot of years, but watching this, I might actually do it. And it's nothing you don't already know. It's just structured probably better than you know. It's structured so incredibly well that it's, uh, it's just simple and direct. You're not doing a seven-phase... 8 phase, 10 phase, any card, any no, any card, uh, sorry, ambitious card routine. You're doing something just simple, direct, that just fries people and gets them to go, what the? Think very, this is something, uh, this is the ambitious card routine. I would expect David Blaine to watch this, and out of everything in this set, I think he'd take this and apply it and just change out above anything else. Paper switch. Another one of my favorite effects. Absolutely another one of my favorite effects. It fooled me because you're literally just handling like one card giving it to one card, and different card is on its own. You're telling them to hold it like this. You give it to them, and it changes places with their selected card. It changes in their selected card. Wow. Paper Switch has some killer stuff in it, and it also teaches a really interesting changeover that I've wanted to learn for years. I think I saw Paul V. Hill do it back in 2012. I saw him at the King Inc. Lounge. And it was, he did it so well that it fooled the crap out of me. Ben explains it to the point where now I can do it as well. And it makes me so happy because it's an insanely hard technique, but it's super easy when you know from when you learn from somebody that knows how to do it properly and correctly and has know all the subtleties. That's what you're paying for again, folks, not before I continue on. You're paying for somebody to do all of the thinking, all of the work for you, impart it into your brain, and then you can further expand on it and apply your own thinking, your own knowledge, your own persona onto the stuff that already works. In my world in advertising, this is the equivalent. I explained it to my business partner who's an advertiser and knows nothing about magic. I said it's like they give you all of the winning ads that are guaranteed to get people to click and follow through and come in and book uh, calls and appointments with you. It's like they give them all to you in one neatly done package. That's what you're getting here. Jedi mind trick. I love anything Star Wars. This effect's so, so cool. And the premise of I'm going to show you a Jedi mind trick really, um, really, really draws him in. And you know what? Why not? Well, let's let's go ahead here. I, uh, before I continue on, I want to show you just the level of quality really quick in, like, the video. So I'm going to play through kind of a... You know, I'm going to show you kind of like when you're going, like in the performances, look how well shot this is. Like, look at the beauty of this, how well shot it is. And they're going between different cuts of multiple performances. You're not just seeing one performance of everything. You're seeing a ton of different performances. And I will say, if you're somebody that struggled with palming, this set is going to make your palm a million times better. If you're someone that's great at palming, I consider myself to be great at palming. This set improved my palm exponentially absolutely exponentially like right left both palms I really really improved it but look at the quality of everything in this like look at the, the color grading the 
look, the feel, look at the reactions. It's all amazing. There's not one lackluster reaction, the whole thing, for each and every individual trick done. No one just kind of goes, oh, that's cool. Like you see it, like you, like a lot of magic companies will try and cut out to do. This stuff is all so good and so properly done that you don't need, they don't need to rely on those kind of tricks in production and post-production. I know, because I've done it in the past. Penguin does it constantly. They'll have a limit of a trick, and they'll totally just cut another reaction over it. And that's just my opinion when I say that. It's my opinion. I'm not saying... Let me take that back. I'm not saying they do that. It's just my opinion that they do that. They definitely have not told me directly that's what they do when I was working them back in the day. Say they'll do the ambitious... Say they do the trick they're selling, and then do the ambitious card and just film the reactions. They definitely told me they don't do that. They did not tell me they did that. They did not tell me that at all. So I'm perfectly protected. Um, and then finally down here in theory. Theory is a fascinating section. Because, I mean, you can see what's covered in here, right? So covering what really is magic. Why do you do it? When do you perform it? What's, what's, how do you get natural with it in a way that's really great? Tactics for deception and being really extra deceptive. Um... You know, how to improve your memory so that you're not basically forgetting what you're doing in the moment and you can remember these scripts and everything. There's some really good stuff in that. The question of how, like how do you do it? How do you handle when somebody says how? Because most people say, oh, I can't tell you. It's a magician. You can't say their secrets. That's stupid, dude. There's so many better answers to that, and that's something that Ben covers at length. This is a big one right here. This one right here, knowing when to stop. This is bigger, in my opinion, than the next one just getting caught. Knowing when to stop is so important. For me personally, if I do an effect, I will pick and choose. I'll get to know the person a little bit. I'll do one thing, and I will do my best to stop. I'll make them beg for the next one. And that's some of the stuff Ben goes into here, and I think that's way more valuable to you out there than anyone else because this is what makes the perception of magic special, unique, and make sure it has a good reputation, because nothing's worse than the magician trying to show you 30 tricks when you were done at number one. Really important. Getting caught, pretty obvious. Just, what do you do when you get caught? How do you say it? What do you do? How do you handle it? What should be your mentality? What should be your body language? What, what, what are you conveying? You know? Practice goes out saying, Ben's, and you know, it's funny, like one of the stories that G has told me of illusionist when he was getting talk started with Ben about doing this project, he said he was at Magic Live, and while everybody else was at the bar doing their thing, Ben was sat over a little individual table on his own with his notebook open, he was writing. And a lot of the stuff he was writing actually ended up going into Unreal Card Magic. And G slipped away, everyone noticed him, went over and said, hey Ben, how you doing? And started chatting him up, and you know, while Ben was, while everyone else was having a good time, Ben was practicing his craft. I mean, not with a deck of cards in hand per se, but he was writing. He was doing the real work. The stuff that most of us out there watching, most of, most of us out there are probably is too scared to actually do. I know I try my best to put my own personality, my own hooks, my own interest peaks, my own what is this all about, my own, you know, kind of clothes to things that are unique and different. But being able to practice, it, being able to practice that stuff, the really difficult stuff, doing the stuff that we don't think matters or we know matters, but it's difficult because it's not as fun as doing the tricks and getting the reactions, it's really important. And Ben goes into a bit of that in here. And obviously our outro here too. And you can see as this is going on, like look at that. It's just so beautifully shot. They did such a wonderful job. Miles and Dwayne uh, and G, the Illusionist team, Oban Jones, Ben and everyone over at... Um, uh, over at his side of things at 52 Studio. They did such a wonderful job. They created something really beautiful. Like, this set is... And this set and this material is so freaking good that I'm probably going to end up getting a subscription to the family. I mean, it just seems like a no-brainer at this point when I've seen what Ben can do and what value he delivers with his magic. It's a no-brainer to me that I should definitely join the family. I mean, and I'm the last guy to agree to a magic subscription service and things like that. Uh, other than Christian Graces, you know, not many of them seem like they pay back enough for me to really invest. But my God, Ben freaking crushes it. Wow. So we've gone over a lot here. 
I've rambled a lot. I've tried to keep it really clear and concise and shorten this down because I just got done filming two videos before this, one for the Everyday Carry Peak Wallet, one for the Ruby Cup, both of which are projects I really, really am passionate and love. This being another one I'm really passionate and love. And I realized in the Ruby Cup video, I went for 30 minutes. And while I think this deserves 30 minutes, I don't think that you guys want to take that kind of time out. So I'm hoping I've kept this short. I have no idea what the timing is on this video just yet. But all that being said, I wanna wrap this up with an obvious, obvious thing here. Obviously, I find this material highly beneficial to myself. If I find it beneficial to myself, I can definitely suggest something this to someone like you watching this. So, all that being said, even if you're somebody thinks you know everything already, you know all of your card magic, you know all of your fancy this, that's, and the other, you are fully dialed in, you feel like, on I can do a double lift, I can do this, I can do that, oh, I can do a uh, pass, oh, I can do the hardest slice in the world. I invite you to purchase this set, not only because you're getting, you know, these amazing decks of cards, or this beautiful art piece, which is now gonna be a really great addition to my backdrop here. I love the fact this is there. Or this amazing book that I need to read. I'm sorry, I should have read it. I just haven't had time, guys. I've been, I digested all the material between being on set, doing a lot of other things. Or the fact that it's packaged beauty. Don't, you don't need to buy this because of that. You can just buy the downloads. Understand you're gonna get an immense amount of value out of this because I have two. If there's one person looks at this and goes, I didn't get nothing out of it. I'm sorry, but you're thick in the head, as the English like to say, which means you are just absolutely absorbed in yourself. There's so much cool stuff in this. Whether you're somebody that's looking for new techniques or to evolve your techniques or new magic to perform and show people, that is going to absolutely be unreal. I know that was cheeky what I just did there, but it's going to blow their mind. They're going to run away, you know, because they're so flabbergasted from something as simple as a card trick. This set has elevated my card magic. I didn't do as much card magic until now. Now I'm really seeing how not trivial card magic is. And this is a guy coming from being obsessively a mentalist for 10 years or so. And just now getting my feet wet again back into the world of cards, coins, visual magic. I just shunned it for so long. But I did. I forgot to understand one important thing, which is the biggest thing this set really teaches you and I think taught me as well. And I'll quote Dr. Phil. It's not about you. <laughs> at least it isn't at all levels. It's mostly about your audience. And if you can make your magic attractive, slick, and simple, and easy to follow, and so hard hitting that it just knocks them right between the eyes, you're gonna find so much immense value. And I wanna invite you here to check out Unreal Card Magic. I've waited till the end to say it, but if you want 10% off of Unreal Card Magic or your entire order to Illusionist, go ahead and just click the link below. Or use coupon code, all capitals, Jacob Michaels. That being said, thank you so much for joining. Thanks for watching this video if you made it to the end here. I have no idea what the length is, so hopefully it's not too long. But I really am passionate about this particular product. And I hope you find it, you get it, and you find as much passion as I did. And as much of an awakening as well through Unreal Card Magic. I should say, I have Unreal Card Magic 2. That review will be coming eventually as well. I've already looked through all the materials, the whole nine yards. Um, I've got a few opinions on it. Do I think it's as great as this one? You'll see. Um, but that being said, I really appreciate your time, dear viewer. You have no idea how much magic's enriched my life. It continues to enrich my life. It continues to help me personally and professionally. And being able to give this to you all means so much. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.